update. I'm Paul Turner, uh, Chief Marketing Officer at Cloudian and responsible for the product strategy as well as the go-to-market activities. And we're going to give you some pretty interesting updates today. I hope, it, uh, hope it'll intrigue you. Uh, but we've got Gary Agasawara uh, over on the right-hand side here. Gary leads our engineering team. He's going to give updates on our new smart data capabilities, where we've actually added in the ability to actually understand data, not just store data at petabyte scale, but actually be able to analyze that, be able to be able to search for that data and be able to discover that data. So you're going to get actually a demo of that today, a showcase of it. I think, I hope that'll be quite interesting and appealing to you. We have, of course, got Mike So, uh, who's uh, actually going to kick it off for us today. Mike is our CEO of the company, uh, founder of the company, uh, very strong background in the telecoms networking world and has, has established Cloudian back in 2011 when we incorporated the company. And then we have Vikram Gupta. Uh, Vikram is our lead of product management and really responsible for everything that we go through today in terms of new products and new innovations that we're doing. Um, you'll see our big focus today is what we can do on both smart data and smart operations because as data scales, you need to have a different approach to how you manage data and then you can't move data to analytics. You need to bring analytics into the storage platform and we'll showcase how we do that uh, with some of the work from Gary. So with that, I'm gonna hand over to Mike. Thank you, Paul. So um, we have some very cool stuff to show you guys today. So I'll, I'll keep my part um, reasonably quick. So overall, the, the, the reason why we're here, right? We, we've been doing this for about five years. The reason why we're here is we, we're here to solve big data growth problem, right? So you can see on, on the left, we, we, we've all seen some of these charts, but I have a couple of different conclusions here. So one is that, you know, of course you see data is doubling, you know, sort of roughly every two years. We're recreating the whole world's data roughly every two years. Um, and that leads to a huge shortfall in, in terms of what um, we're able to spend and what we have to store. So that, that, that's a big deal, big gap that, that's, that's growing. And the second one that not a lot of people talk about is just the, uh, sort of human uh, part, part of this, and we, we're going to be talking about this today too, is you know, there, there's not going to be enough people around the world to be able to manage all, all, all the data that we're in creating. So um, when, when you look at it, you know, these kind of very big trends, there, there's sort of two major conclusions here. One is that really, I think that, that's really starting to happen now for, for sure, but when we started, it really wasn't that clear that Everything on storage, you know, sort of almost everything, is going to be software defined because the only thing in the world that can keep up in terms of cost down with with, with that kind of growth is the commodity hardware. Right? So everything. So you you you're, you're still seeing appliances or whatever, but appliances are actually, if you look at the way they're built today, they're built on the latest commodity hardware. So everything is becoming software defined. And then the second point here is that you know. The, the whole kind of software defined is only actually solving sort of one thir third of the problem. It's not solving the entire problem. It's not the you know, it's, it's it's not the be all and sort of end all solution. Um, what, what what becomes very very critical when, once you bring the cost down is okay. What how how do you manage at scale? And then how do you get get to get the you know real sort of information from the data? Um, you know you know when your S scale. So the idea of sort of copying your data from a storage pool into like a big data analytics system and re running a Hadoop job on that, we really believe that, that that idea is really dated. So it's gonna get harder and harder to copy the all the data that we have. It's gonna be easier to move the compute tasks to, to, to actually analyze the data. It's easier to move these compute tasks onto the data. Right, so, so think, think of the, this as all the, all the storage nodes will become smart and it can tell you about the data that, that it's storing. So that, that's what you will see us starting to demonstrate today um, is this um, more on you know, this part of the, of, of, of the equation. So um, overall, the, the uh, company had a, a real breakout year last year. Um, we grew a lot on the top line, three, 300%. We, um, we won nine out of 10 deals that we were in a competitive situation in. So that, that's a really, really um, key point and really you know, hu huge kind of differentiator. And we'll, we'll explain why we're um, having such a high winning ratio. We uh, did not lose a single customer. 
we won six awards. Um, we were ranked number one in PR and also so social authority. And we also broke into four um, major new verticals for us. And um, we also have um, a couple of uh, pretty major global uh, OEM agreements that, that uh, one has been announced and one will be coming shortly. So very, very strong year, continuing to see a lot of momentum. So the question is, why, why are we winning? Um, so the, the, the key point here is that um, the idea of object st uh, storage and the kind of technology of it actually been, has been around for a long time. Um, but actually, standards matter, right? We, we, we haven't had a standard where everybody can, can write to um, you know, every object store in the same way, like we can do with files, like, like we, we can do with block. We, we've had lots of vendor specific you know, kind of in APIs. And to sort of channel Andy Grove a little bit here, um, standards is what actually you know, is gonna drive the number of users and then a large number of users is gonna drive standards. So um, I, I, I uh, was at uh, Intel when um, Andy was the CEO and that was you know, that, that um, sort of chart is one that we, we all had, you know, kind of burning to our, our, our minds where standards is what, what's going to drive um, having more apps and having more apps going to drive having more users and if you have more users, then you're going to have more people developing apps. So it's a, it's a spiral that just keeps on going. So it's very key. So, it's, so you know, in a very sim simple way, the, the way to think about this is that people, when they buy a PC, they don't care about how, how many levels of pipelining you know, does a CPU have, right? I mean, it's you know, very interesting, but it's not why you know, people have PC. People care about the fact it can run all of the apps. So the, the same thing for storage, right? I mean, we, we spend a lot of our time talking about how, how do we do replication, how are we doing erasure coding, but in the end, it's really about the apps. So in our space, what has really emerged um, in the past, I would say, one, one to two years is that so the Amazon has really come along and just by sheer weight of their success, they, they have sort of broken the cycle and they, they have created a de facto standard for scale out object storage um, that has a very deep set of APIs. It's the simple storage service in S3. Very deep um, I mean, set of APIs, has a lot of functionality and most importantly, it's attracted a lot of users, a, a lot of application developers and a lot of users and a lot of objects. So, they, they have gotten the cycle going. So the reason why we, we have seen a lot of success is that we are the only 100% native, 100% um, natively S3 compatible um, uh, object store. And we bet the company on this concept when we fir first started. So what we mean here is that when we, we built our storage, we did not build our own sort of authority, uh, our, our own sort of proprietary API and then build some kind of shim on top to you know, translate like you know, um, a lot of the other people do. We, we built it from, from the ground up to be 100% compatible and that's what we mean by 100% native. And we support all of the calls that you, you see here and we support all of the, you know, all of the different states and all of the different error codes. So you're talking about a very large number combination of these. And, and what, what we do is we actually provide a 100% guarantee that if your apps works with, with, with like the Amazon APIs, it will also work with Cloudium storage. So it's, it's completely compatible. It will just work, all, all your apps work. So that was really the kind of foundation um, of the company. Um, and that, that was a very good bet, and that was the, the reason why we're now seeing a lot of success. The second uh, part, part of this, um, of, of our, our bet was that um, we, we um, also believe that all storage will eventually be hybrid. So I think we, we're now starting to see this, where um, once you, you have a standardized API, data can actually truly be you know, fully portable. It can be going in one cloud, over time it can do it, go into another cloud, it can move, move back, etc. So we spent quite a bit of time in the last um, storage field day uh, that, that we were on storage field day number seven, we spent a lot of time talking about <coughs> these first two. So the, the third one that we, we're gonna focus on, that they're gonna be spending a lot of time on uh, this afternoon is on smart data. So that, that's our, um, our, 
uh, idea that the um, you know so over time the storage have to tell you about the data, not um, really have to move the data to somewhere else to find out um, about the data. So it's the, it's the convergence of the big data analytics and um, uh, scale out storage. Um, these um, cars are actually all moving and there is um, a system that's actually there's you know, cameras that actually wa watching these and actually are um, in real time is able to identify what is the make and model and year of the car at, at, at the speeding towards you and it's actually happening in real time so it's like wow so what what is this about right so this is a an example of a smart data project that um, we have um, going on and we're going to be announcing this I think uh, in in about a week or so mm -hmm. maybe a, you know in maybe a week or two so um, but essentially <coughs> what you're seeing here is um, um, live live streaming video from um, these highway uh, billboards and it's um, essentially it's you know shooting at all the cars that's coming back and then it's streaming this back into a cloud in hyperstore and in real time in, in under one second it's you know deciding what kind of cars are coming what year you know model and then it's you know dynamically changing what is on on, on that big display board right so so if you if you see like a like 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 a Tesla coming, maybe you want to sell some you know, you know some you know, kind of luxuries, high, high high tech goods or something, right? If you if you if you see a Toyota, you might you want to sell something else, right? I mean that's the the idea. So within one second, we're we're you know taking a video and then we we, we are updating the ad. This so, is using Cloudian storage. Yeah, yeah. So so let me show you how um, this was done. So. You, you have the big you know, highway displays, and then you have um, you know, video cameras, and that, that's being streamed back in, into a clouding storage, and th there is you know, the custom-built apps that's running uh, on top of this that's doing a, a you know, sort of real-time you know, kind of image recognition, um, and then it's doing the real-time real advertising targeting. And then in the background, there, there is a deep uh, learning process that's running all the time. That is um, you know, basically studying from you know videos of cars and you know, you know web web based images and so on. It's actually being trained to create a model that then is allows us to do this in sort of real time really quickly. So the reason why it's important to have standards is that you know it actually took um, not a lot of time to build all of this because um, it was built all using sort of standard off the shelf components. Um, so. The uh, main company that is working on this company called Dentsu, as you, some of you know, and they're top um, five in advertising companies uh, uh, in the world. And they were using this software made up by this company called Smart Insight. That's um, one of the Amazon you know, partner networks. So their, their, their software uses the uh, Intel Cafe um, you know, deep learning um, tools and it talks to a you know, Amazon you know, compatible API that we're providing so it's able to read and write data out of it right and they they are able to do this so we, we are able to pull the <coughs> whole, whole thing together by having you know a partnership with all, all these companies and what makes it happen it's, it's is that there is a standard right because because then all the pieces just come all, all the pieces just come together. Hmm? This is just the beginning, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. I mean, this is really just the fir first one, right? Because if, if, if three or four, of maybe even six or seven cars are driving by at the same time, you can only show one image. Yeah, so, so in, <laughs> internally, it's, it's, it's making some you know, you know, kind of decision, right? So if you know, this video worked, um, what you would have seen is that it's, it's, actually like, it's, it's actually picking on all the cars. Right, you know, as a cars are coming, and, and in order to, to show this, the frame rate got could actually slow slow down because it's actually really doing doing this in real time. So yeah, it's got to make make a determination. You know, what what are we so doing? So you want to know who's in the car also and decide <laughs> on who's <laughs> driving. <laughs> we will show. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if we can do do that yet, but I think that the idea soon that will come. <laughs> the the idea here is it's it's you know when you have a you know you know, kind of industry
a standard API for you to store and to be able to retrieve data, um, then all these other things can be built on top of that. And these things can be you know, kind of piled on together very quickly. And it's really uh, tying so it's, in. I mean, we're the stateful storage engine that sits behind this, but we're tying in then a real-time analytics engine at the front end that's going to read this, ingest it, it does it in memory, does quick processing, all stateful storage is kept in us. And so you see more and more that's where we see this stuff. And then within our stateful storage, as you'll see from Gary, we're then adding much more in terms of understanding of that data, how we actually extra tag the data and understand it. So later on, you can do big data search and discovery against it. So, yeah. so and then I, I also forgot to man, man, mention our partners, you know, Quanta here, that they, um, they were in uh, here providing the very large billboards and also all the you know, background computing uh, hardware as well. So, they so going back to that, yeah. if you go to the, to the, to the slide before, the <laughs> Tesla has its own display, right? So you could show it in Tesla <laughs> and that one is driving by, so you can show that on yeah. the could, Of course. Personalized. <laughs> no. uh, that would be nice. So feed it straight onto the person's individual car. I like it. Or so. send them a text. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure they'll appreciate it, but okay, so. <laughs>